You're listening to Life Check Yourself with life coach, transformational leader, and dating and relationship badass, Marnie Batista. Every week, you'll get the raw truth from top experts and real people on the important life and love issues you want to know about. So if you're ready to life check yourself in your relationships, your career, and the areas of your life that matter most to you, and you're not afraid to be called out on your uh, stuff, then you're ready for what's next. want to hear why your relationships always feel hard. Ladies, welcome. I'm super excited to uh, introduce you today to another uh, love and relationship coach. She's a transformational speaker. His name is Steven. We, oh my God, I messed it up, Steven. Steven Weruri. You oh, got it. You got it, mommy. You get good. You know what I mean? I love it. I love it. Um, he is a highly respected transformational speaker and relationship coach, and he is known for helping women overcome their dating challenges and find true love. Um, he has a company called Eerie Coaching. Uh, he's based in Seattle, Washington, uh, which is a place I love. And he's been doing this for over a decade, working with women in the community at a behavior change communications program. He also is an energy leadership index master practi- practitioner, um, as am I, because he went to my alma mater, IPEC, which means he's an awesome coach. I'm so excited um, that you're here. And also you walk the talk. You're happily married to your wife, Abigail. You have four kids. Oh my gosh. How old are your kids? Uh, my first born is 16, um, yeah, downward, 16, uh, around uh, uh, th- uh, 13, uh, 10, and uh, 5. Wow. <laughs> oh, my God. I love it. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, so let's, let's talk about this. How the heck, let's just start with how did this become your mission and your passion? Because I, I think... They say you teach what you had to learn. So I don't know if that's true in your case. So tell me about it. Yeah, it's interesting you're asking me. You teach what you have to learn. And um, my focus uh, mainly is to uh, uh, help women uh, find love, uh, overcome dating challenges. And yet I'm not a woman. But uh, right. uh, yeah. And uh, but but I was inspired to become uh, uh, to focus on helping women overcome their dating challenges and find love after going through a situation in my family where uh, my 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 uh, my family members uh, especially women uh, they had to endure uh, struggles and pain in their family relationships uh, they experienced gender based violence abuse uh, neglect infidelity divorce and, and, and when I looked at them, when they ran to me, and they used to run to me for help, <laughs> and, of and I, I can and, imagine. And, yeah, and and and, and I, I saw them felt trapped. They felt trapped. I saw mm-hmm. confusion and hopelessness, and this broke my heart, because even when I would try to give them some advice, they felt yeah I want to act mm-hmm. even on that. Uh, so uh, that led me. Uh, that led me. Uh, that made me realize that most of the time, women find themselves in situations that are unfavorable for them, but they find it hard to make a decision that will favor them, even to make a step to leave such a condition or circumstances. They they fail to do it because they have to consider about the investment they have already made. Well, that's what I wanted to ask you about, because one of the things that I saw when I was kind of preparing for this um, is this idea of like the sunk costs, right? Like we get so invested in the person. Um, I even think about it as like the timeline, right? Like if I think about people in my family or people in your family, like you have this idea of what your life is going to look like. You're going to be with this person. You're going to have kids with this person. You're going to have the holidays, you're going to grow old together. What is everyone going to think? And it's almost like the deeper you get into like your imagined future, it becomes like too terrifying to imagine anything else because 
it's only what you know. Like, how do you ha- like? What's your secret to help people with this? So, so uh, to understand better this sunk cost fallacy is to understand that it's a psychological science. It's been discovered in science as a psychological uh, phenomena that occurs when you continue to invest in a failing endeavor, even uh, okay. cost, yeah, even when the cost outweigh the benefit. Uh, uh, yeah. and, and, and my goal is to help women overcome this challenge and find the lasting love, is to bring them to uh, make decisions based on the present and the future rather than the past. Because the past gets to hold them back when they think about what uh, they have put in and what they hoped to get, they still hold on with hope that things would get better. But even, even, even if they see in the present sense, after they look at their, the situations where they are and where they are going, there is no hope, but still hold on. And they say, oh, I've invested too much. It's too much to let go. And they keep on digging deeper and deeper into a hole that will never help them in their lives. So my role is to help them come out of that hole and be able to make decisions, take steps, specific steps that will be able to guide them to experience new, to make decisions that will favor them, decisions that keep keep them number one, (laughs) because that's very key. Yeah, no, I love this. I was as you were talking about this. So you live in Seattle, right? Yes, I live in Seattle, Mill Creek. To be okay. So my daughter uh, goes to the university. My daughter goes to the University of Washington, and most recently, we had a very upsetting football game occur. Oh, <laughs> <yes>. <laughs> right! And the national championship. And it, we were talking about sunk cost, and I was thinking about watching that game and like wanting this te- team to win, right? Like, and it's like the fourth quarter, and you're like, no, like. They're going to win, right? And and at the, some point, you're like, it's not happening. Right. right. Like, it's not happening. You have to be, and I think about this, um, I've done this at times in my business, you know, where you like invest in a business idea that you have. I think listeners can relate to that too. We don't just do this in our relationship. So when you think about like, what are the steps uh, to stop being attached to the potential or being attached to all the blood, sweat, and tears you put into a relationship or a game or a business. What's the first step we need to do to get out, Stephen? Number one is to take a moment to reassess and reevaluate and rediscover yourself. Rediscover Mm. yourself. Yes. Okay. Self-awareness about who you really are. Because sometimes you may enter into a situation, a relationship that affects you so much that you lose your identity. You lose who you are and you get so lost that you don't, you no longer know what is good for you. You no longer know what works for you and you're in that confusion. So it's, Im- it's important for somebody to take a step back. If he, you are in a situation, take a break, take a break. There is one client and I would share, there is one client who yes. is very very toxic relationship. Uh, she, 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 they, they, they are living together in, in one place. Uh, she, she's paying all the bills and the gentleman is not. And sometimes the gentleman says, okay, I'm going out with my, my girlfriend and he's leaving the, the wife in the house and going out a girlfriend, like watch football and everything. And the, this lady would come so demoralized, feeling devalued, so broken. And, and you know, one of the things I told her, stop worrying about him. Start taking care of yourself. Mm. Start looking at how you can make the best of yourself. Create, start looking for opportunities for self-care. What do you love doing? Mm. Don't put your focus into the gentleman and give yourself self-care. And you know what she did? She took a break. She went for a vacation and she applied some of the advice that I gave her or well, the guidance that I gave her, that go and, and do, do not communicate with him. Switch off your phone. What happened? Don't what happened? And she went, she communicated where she's going, and she said, this is my me time. She went to spend time with a family member in another state, and she spent a good time. She went uh, into the casino and uh, did some games, and then went back, spent time with the relatives and everything. And 
this, you know what, what, what happened? The gentleman was so, so lonely. He was so yes. sad. And once she, she, she stayed there for about one month, when she came back, the gentleman was on his knees. And he really? was begging, he was begging never for half for never to do such a thing again. He started taking her out and treating her and treating her. Oh. I'll say you are the best thing in my life. I don't want to lose you. Please don't, don't, don't leave me. Because she gave a sign that she's valuable. She made a statement. Yeah, that she's important. If somebody is taking advantage of you, sometimes you need to give yourself some time so that he realizes. You make them miss the moment and realize what they might miss. And that can bring about a turnaround. And actually, after that, she, when she, she was feeling um, unable to do anything, her dreams and visions were down, she was so empowered that she started her own company. She oh, that's started amazing. her own business. And, 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 and the relationship now is even more flourishing. She's treated like a queen. So that is what happens That's when you want to make a difference. You need to rediscover yourself. Take a moment and give yourself self-care. Give yourself self-love. And when you make yourself the focus and not the other person, then you add value on yourself. Mm, I love this because I'm thinking of some clients and people who I'm sure are listening tell themselves the story that um, their relationship with somebody is good enough. Do, do you know what I mean? Like yeah. um, a little bit of li- a little bit of lying to yourself, you know, like, oh, we're just friends. It's okay. You know, I don't take it seriously. And I think that what you're saying is that when you stop putting the focus on that person and give yourself some space, not only maybe does the other person miss you, But you realize, like, you have room for these other thoughts to come in about, like, wait, like, I'm I'm happy when I'm not, you know, thinking about this person, when I'm doing things that make me full of joy, when I'm investing in other relationships. And I think what happens is that we get so caught in these toxic relationships, we don't realize how, like, unhappy or heavy it is because we don't create space for ourselves between these people that aren't giving us what we need. Do you see that happening that like you don't even know what you don't know sometimes when you get so embroiled in these unhealthy patterns? Yes, mommy. Uh, you know, I, I have come to realize that most of the time we underestimate our value. Yeah. We underestimate what we are and who we are. And yet, even without any other external additions, just being who you are, the value of who you are as a person, as a lady, as a woman, is enough, is actually enough for you to look at yourself in the positive light ever, in the positive light. And once you start looking at yourself in such a manner, you know, it starts reflecting and everybody around you. And they are able to see the value that you put. You know, there are some people who say, what do you bring on the table? And there are some men who who may may, may look at you and say, oh, you don't bring anything. There are some women who are just in the house and like housewife, and they are not even in the business or whatever. And then the the man tends to uh, undermine them, uh, uh, devalue them. Just because they are in the house and he goes out to 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 fend for the family, but just being a woman is valuable enough for you to command respect. Ooh. Yeah, it's not about what you do. It's who you are. It's not about what you do. It's not about what you've accumulated, but it's about who you are, who you are as a person. And therefore, in in, in my program, in, in my program, which we, which I call the I Am Factor. The I am factor focuses on harnessing <laughs> and discovering who you are and harnessing that and learning how to communicate the same to your environment so that you can command the respect you deserve. Okay, so listen to this. So I have someone that I was just talking to, and she's like, I look in the mirror and all I see is like, 
I'm getting older. I have more wrinkles. You know, I used to, you know, think that I, you know, men were falling all over me. I was, I was, you know, younger, right? And I think that so many women today, especially, are really focusing on comparing themselves, right? Like not seeing their value for for who they are, uh, based on like social media or what they think they're supposed to look like. So, what do you say to someone who's like saying, Stephen, like, I get that I'm supposed to, you know, be enough, but I look in the mirror and I'm like, I'm not so great anymore. What do you, what do they do? How can they start? I think it's, it's starting to identify or realize that our value is not limited to our physical looks. Our value is not limited to our physical looks. Every woman, once they understand that our value, as much as the physical is good and is important, but there is more. There is more to right. it. And that more is learning to harness the value because values and principles that we go by are the ones that actually give us a proper identity of who we truly are. It's not our face. It's not our right. eyelashes. Right. It's, not, right. it's not our eyelashes, but it's about what do we stand for? What are the values that we cherish within, within us and live by? And those becomes another kind of beauty that is unbeatable. Somebody may put on makeup and another person has not put on makeup. And the person with values and principles becomes more attractive than the person who has put on makeup. Therefore, yeah. looking at a mirror and deciding that, oh, I am not good enough just because of the way I look in the mirror, that is being mis, uh, misguided. And therefore, we need to go back to rediscovering the true value of who we really are. Now, that does not mean that we neglect our physical. Okay. Right. Of course. Yeah. Right. It doesn't. It doesn't mean we neglect our physical looks. No, but it's, it it simply means that the key foundation that brings out authenticity of who we truly are, we need to learn to develop those things that cannot be lost, no matter where we are, no matter mm -hmm. what happens to us, whether you are sick, whether you are healthy, those values will shine through and they will remain an attractive aspect in you that makes your partner want to stay with you and die with you. No matter what. Oh, I love that. Uh, I think this is so amazing because I know in my own journey, even, you know, having my husband and uh, having my business and all those things, I realized a lot in that journey, even in the last few years of like still thinking, right, that like, my happiness comes from, you know, success, right? Or from having this house or living in this town or whatever it is. And I, and the reason why I'm sharing that is because I think a lot of people will say, oh, you know, I have self-worth, you know, I think I'm a value, but I think it's pretty sneaky. I think the older we get, the more we don't realize that the, the life that we've created is kind of a shield right? That we believe that we're enough because look what we created. And if you take all those things away, do you still feel enough? And I think that's what you're saying is you have to, you have to say, if you took all of it away, you know, and you just showed up, you know, um, with your best expression of who you are physically, do you believe in that that's enough? And so I think people who are listening, you know, it's important to be honest, because if you don't, you're like, well, it's sad there's some work that needs to be done. So if you so in your in your coaching and in the work that you do, like what's some of the biggest obstacles that you see your clients have to come when they're trying to create a new identity? I think one of the biggest obstacle is lack of clarity. Lack of clarity. Oh, love that. Yeah. Lack of yeah. clarity. Clarity on who we are. Who are you? How do you figure that out, Stephen? What do you yeah. have your What do you have people do? It, it's it's take them into a self uh, assess a values assessment. Like I said, our identity ah. is tied to our value. It's tied okay, to our great. values, and until we are clear on the 
uh, values that bring out the authentic self of who we truly are, then we don't really know who we are. So once they do a values assessment, identify their values, then they discover with those values, the next thing is to discover the, the skills that they can develop within them. Because the identity of who you are is your values and principles, and then the skills that you're supposed to harness to be able to interact and become effective in your environment. So once you know yourself, you grow yourself, grow. You know, I like that. Right. Grow your skills. And once you, you grow yourself, then you learn the way to immerse yourself, communicate that value, and uh, share that value in your world. So there are three big blocks and, 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 and big steps that must be taken. A self-discovery okay. and a self-assessment. And two, uh, focus on, on self-growth, growing yourself. And number three is learn how to communicate the value to your environment because you can know yourself and you can you can actually uh, have a lot of value within you but people don't know they don't know because you don't right. know how to communicate uh, the same value and therefore you may end up suffering like a person who don't know themselves <laughs> right yeah. well that's so true because i always i always think um you know i say to someone um you know, what would, what do you want to say to this person? You know? And they're like, well, you know, whatever. Like, so I had an example of a client who, um, uh, when a, a guy asked her out in real life, you know, which is really fun for ladies these days, when a guy comes up to you and asks you out and they went for coffee and, um, he did not offer to pay for the coffee. And so she was like, I'm not going out with that guy again. And I was like, well, I had a sense, Stephen, that she was kind of giving him the friend vibe, you know? And so I I said, um, well, do you think that he was confused that you were interested? And she was like, maybe. So, so when you talk about communicating your values, so what I had her do was she messaged the guy and said, I was very confused that this was a date because you didn't buy me coffee. And um, like, did I friend zone you? Like, I, I'm so confused because they met at a work function. Anyway, and he ended up saying like, um, oh my God, the minute I didn't buy your coffee, I regretted it. I literally didn't know if you were interested in me at all. And I just panicked. I would love to take you out and be a gentleman. The reason why I'm sharing this story is because when you have your value and you know, like I'm worthy, we're two humans, went on an awkward coffee date and you can express, you can communicate your value, right? You're not ashamed or afraid of getting rejected, then there you are. That's a great example of knowing who you are, uh, knowing your value, right? And then expressing it in in the real world. So when you're working with people, what are some of the skills that you teach them so that they're now expressing their value and they're actually dating or in their relationship? Is it setting boundaries? Is it certain conversations? What What do you do? Uh, what, what I do is... Uh, uh... Communication is very key in anything. In yeah. Fact, in fact, communication is the key uh, a pillar for human experience. Mm. In we experience the world through communication, whether it's in the That's workplace, the... yeah, it's in the workplace, whether it's in the marriage whether it's in any form of relationship. And therefore, putting more emphasis on learning how to express yourself, express your emotions the right way, and communicating your needs the right mm. way becomes very key in helping uh, these women be able to experience what they desire and what they deserve. Because what and we what do... They're... Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. And, and when you uh, don't learn how to express uh, those needs, therefore you will always be getting uh, 
different results that do not meet your needs. And so I take them through a moment, like I said, a value assessment and self-awareness is very key. And then uh, the other thing is identifying your strength, strength analysis, uh, analysis. Yes. strengths and weaknesses. Yes. Analysis becomes very key in helping uh, these women be able to uh, discover where they are strong on and uh, uh, areas where they need some growth, uh, some growth. And that kind of clarity and awareness helps you to know how to navigate your environment and your world. And you interest. Yes. I love this. I think it's interesting because someone would do this at work, right? They'd be like, okay, I'm going to do a strengths evaluation and, you know, more willing to hear this. And what you're saying is that you need to approach your communication in your relationships that are uh, your friends, your family, your romantic, because what you can learn about yourself, right, means you can shift it. You can you can change it, right? But if you're just blaming everybody else or you're just being quiet or too afraid, then it's very hard to um, change anything. So I think looking at what are your strengths and what are your weaknesses like in your in communication is a huge thing in relationships. Yeah, and... and, and- Having a deep sense of of awareness on what you project to your environment plays a very key role in succeeding in whatever is a uh, 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 situation that you are in, and uh, and uh, that is that is very key. Actually, for you to be able to express yourself clearly, it's important to have a peace and a comfort within yourself. So create a safe and comfortable environment with yourself and within yourself so that you don't uh, take out toxicity. Right. (laughs) To your world. (laughs) To your Yeah, yeah, Yeah. of course. Yeah. So you have to be, you have to have self-trust that I always say to people, you don't need to put your needs on trial, right? There's no jury. You don't need to defend them. So how can you communicate what you want and need in a way that, um, you know, is like uh, at IPEC, we talk about like anabolic energy, right? Like coming from a place of love and coming from a place of collaboration and, and instead of like adversarial. And I think so many people have conversations in relationships as if we're adversaries. We're like, no, you're supposed to be partners. Yeah. But it's, it's unfortunate that sometimes it turns out to be. Uh, uh, yeah. adversarial and, and it yeah. becomes more like a competition. But when we understand that the purpose why we come together, the reason, the main reason why we come together is to make the best of each other. Right. We, we lose sight of that. It's to make the best of each other. The focus is to make the best of, the, of yourself and the other. Surely, it starts with yourself. Make the best of yourself. And how you make the best of yourself, you realize that making the best of yourself is making the best of the other person. Because the more you make the best of the other person, the more you get the best of yourself. Yeah. So, so, so when so 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 when we we understand, like 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 I'll I'll, I'll tell you uh, uh, my own experience in my relationship. And yes, my wife. When I met her, I met her. At a moment that uh, I was just in college, I was just in college, and we were in college together. And when I approached her, at that time I wasn't even uh, very sure whether I was ready for marriage. But, right. But I was sure of one thing: I was sure that this is the woman I would want to live, to stay my life, oh. to live my oh, life with I the rest of my life. I was sure of that, and, and and so I approached her and I asked her. Uh, to 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 be my girlfriend because it, it had to start with girlfriend or something. And then she told me, "Right, I, I'm not interested in boyfriend and girlfriend stuff." And I'm like, <laughs> "Don't you love me?" And 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 she said, "Okay, that thing. Give me some time." And then she came back and she was able to accept my proposal. But right. when she accepted, I, she told me that. Her, for her, she's looking for marriage, not boyfriend stuff. 
Yeah, I love that. Yeah, she straight, straight on her head. She knew what she wanted. And that you know, so sexy. What, yeah, that's what she knew what she wanted. She said she, she doesn't have time to play boyfriend and girlfriend. And if uh, I, I've seen her as a person, we can go out with a goal of marriage. If, if, if we see, we find ourselves compatible, if we can decide to go forward, then we go forward. And so from the beginning, from the one go, we knew this is a marriage uh, um, endeavor. And, right. And, oh, I love and, that. And, 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 and when I proposed to marry, to, to marry her, uh, at that time I had not even started walking. And I told her, would you accept me even, even if I still don't have a job? I'm, I'm still in college. She said, okay, um, of course you will finish college, you will graduate, you will get a job, but it, right. doesn't, it doesn't matter what will happen. Uh, I love you and I can stay with you no matter where you are. Even if you stay in a tent, I will live there. Aww. And I was like, I that. so the, the key thing is when you love each other and, and see each other's value, value that is beyond possession, value that is beyond what the person has, then that is something that can be uh, counted on to last all the days of your life. We've been oh my God. 10 years now, and, uh, and up to now, we are still in that position. I still ask her, do you remember you said you can stay anywhere? I said, well, even now, even if anything happens, I'll still stick with you, Steve. Oh, I love that. That's that's really important, and I, and I'm always the person. I mean, I call it old fashioned, whatever. But like, I'm all for someone on the second date or so saying. So I'm in a place where I'm like looking to have you know whatever you're looking to have, like you know a marriage, a partnership, companion, whatever it is. But like, I think that men, the right men, want to hear that because it signals like, oh, she has her stuff together, right? She's confident. She has a choice. She knows her value, right? And that's all that communication thing that you were talking about before. Right. And, and uh, so it's important to for, to help women be able to uh, uh, come out of situations that keep them stuck. Yeah. Yeah, it's because on the other side is like you're going to find your Steven. I mean, come on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, man, there, there are Stevens out there, but it's for people <laughs> who don't really know themselves. Yes, people, <laughs> and they know how to communicate, like, 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 like for her, she communicated directly. Therefore, it is essential to evaluate uh, your current state. Yes, how you are and who you are, and even your current relationship. Yeah, because for you to be able to find the right one, you should not be found playing around with the wrong one. Yeah, because. Oh. Be yeah, I'm like, uh, yeah, that's a hashtag, people. It's true. It's so true. So, yes, because the right one, the right one also is very principled, very principled that he doesn't want you to find you playing around games with uh, people who are not serious. It will be very hard for him to tell that you're the right one if you're playing around with the wrong ones. Yeah. So true. So true. And this, that is for all the ladies. I have worked with so many ladies who they tell me like, oh, I'm dating. I'm doing the whole thing. And then I find they're, uh, they're like, oh, I don't know why I haven't met anyone yet. And I'm like, is there something you're not telling me? And then it's like, oh, they're still sleeping with the guy from before. Oh, they're still, mm -hmm. you know, they're still talking to their ex, you know. And so you can't play it both ways. Yeah. And, then, and you know, money. That is a sign of a person who doesn't know what they want. And that is the clarity that we are talking about. That you yep. have to be clear from the word go. What do yeah. you want? Because once you're clear about who and what you really want, then it will be very easy to pinpoint and identify the one that suits what you want. Oh my. You're amazing. You're so yeah. great. Yeah, I, 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 and, and, and I don't think know, anyone could turn it down. And, and, and you know, and you know, sometimes we may say, "Oh, you know, uh, uh, it, it may be hard." It, it is. It takes sacrifice. It takes sacrifice for you to 
put your foot down and say, I am not mingling with the wrong ones. Because they are people yeah. you look from the from, from the first face. You can tell these are wrong ones. But because you are alone, you feel lonely, you say, okay, let me hang out with this one until I find the right one. You will not find the right one while you are mingling with the wrong one. No, that is literally facts. Facts, ladies. Um, ladies, you definitely want to check out the show notes and find out more about Stephen, the I Am Factor program for building successful relationships. And what I really love about what we've talked about today is there are these steps, right? And I think that what happens is so many ladies are like, oh, I'm going to start dating, download an app, you know, just start doing it. And then they're like, oh, well, this is bad. This isn't working. I quit. And what Steven has been talking about is like, you have to go through this process because everyone wants a guy who has their, you know, shit together. Um, and we think we do. And maybe we have the house and the bank account and the car and the job. But like the process to become that person who attracts that right guy is a process. And I love how you do that and what you do for your clients. I think it's brilliant. So check it out, ladies. So good. And also, there's a really handsome picture of you on your website. So <laughs> you should also check that out. I mean, he's taken, but it's um, Irie Coaching, I R I Coaching.org. Um, and also, we have that link in the show notes. Um, thank you so much for coming on the show. And um, if you're not watching this on YouTube, go check it out on YouTube because you just, he's like looking in the camera. And like, I promise you, you will dump that wrong for you guy when you listen to Steven tell you. Stop playing around. <laughs> and, yeah. um, ladies, so you can find me on Instagram, Marnie Batista underscore. I'm very old fashioned. I'm on Facebook. Send me a friend request. Yep, I still do that. I care. I want to know who you are. Uh, whatever you do, it is time to life check yourself because the life of your dreams is in your grasp. You just have to value yourself, as Stephen has said today. So, Stephen, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Manny, and thank you for having me. I've really enjoyed uh, your interview. Me too with you. So ladies, <laughs> we'll see you next time. So long for now. Bye-bye. Hey, thanks for tuning in to today's show. So if being in an intimate relationship in which you feel 100% seen, heard, and accepted by a high-caliber man is a priority for you right now, and you're interested in seeing if you're a fit for working with me and my team at Dating with Dignity, here's what I want you to do. Just head over to DWDVIP, that's D as in dating, W, D as in dating, VIP.com, and book a call to speak with my team. We'll get on the phone with you for about 60 minutes, and you'll get crystal clear on what's stopping you from finding true love right now. We'll also take a look at what you want to create, what you want your whole life to look like when you're able to finally be fully expressed as a woman in a healthy relationship with an incredible guy. And if we can help you get from where you are right now to where you want to be, we will show you the fastest path possible that makes sense for you to do that. We help smart, successful women all over the world solve this one missing piece in their life so they can finally have it all. So to see if we can help you do the same thing, head over to DWDVIP.com. I'm Marnie Batista, and let's talk soon.